And so I'm wondering when it, if it will ever. But we'll get to that. Um, uh, the web has been notoriously bad. And um, as we go through this, cre this creative, it sort of gets more complicated. For me, it's all simple. I just take a nap. Um, but how does this continuing threat of creative, creative Im Im imagination to code and its relation to typography fit into the new Google efforts like the fabulous one idea in this community? Uh, I'm not sure how many people know this because everybody I ask says what? But Google recently uh, released a, 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 a something called Google Web Design, which is pretty interactive. I mean, it's got a very complicated user interface for someone like me. I'm sure I, I, I turned a couple of my more technically minded type designers onto it. And they were making websites like that. So, how do you see that uh, uh, fitting into? Um, yes, I agree. I think that's a tough one, and I've, I'll pass on this one. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you're the Louisville slugger, and sometimes you're the ball. <laughs> <laughs> so first, a uh, shout out to Jasmine Rogers, who is not only on the Google Web Designer team, but the Google Fonts team. Hola. Um, you absolutely hit the nail on the web. We long believed that the lack of rich typography on the web has been holding it back. And if you imagine all of the very rich offline content, books, magazines, newspapers, even beautiful ads, um, that hasn't really been possible on the web. And it's really, in my opinion, been holding it back. With web fonts, it's now becoming possible. And it's really exciting to see that they form as new content begins to shift to the web. Tools like Google Web Designer, Typecast, Adobe Edge, they're a brand new generation of tools that are designed to make that rich content creation process even easier. And so the goal would be all of us here can create rich content on the web. Further, they're taking it much further. Not only is it rich and engaging, but it can become dynamic. It can be tailored to you to where you're at, to your preferences, to your, your device, to your screen size. And that's incredibly exciting. I'm sure we can all imagine walking around the city here, the beautiful city of Barcelona with our handhelds and wondering, you know, what is the best restaurant nearby? What is the best place to go visit? And when that content is tailored to you, your location, and it looks beautiful, it's really exciting. So that's the future. In terms of typography, fonts across these products, it's really natural to have a multi-year roadmap where you're whittling away at it over many years. Where most of these tools start is by adding support for system fonts, the Verdana, the Georges that you were just referring to earlier. With support for those, users can create text, but that's the big first step. After that, the tools begin to explore using web fonts. Um, and there's a lot of engineering work that has to happen behind the scenes to make it completely seamless to end users. The next step then would most likely be to support a whole library 